Welcome to Alpha Centurion. Uh, today we are doing a book review. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing Jordan Peterson's Beyond Order. I finished this book a long time ago. Uh, I think the week or the second week that it came out is when uh, I started reading it. I finished it and I have made attempts to write a review, made attempts to put a review together. Um, I have here the physical copies of both uh, 12 Rules for Life and Beyond Order, but I also have read Maps of Meaning. I also listened through all of his college lectures that were available on YouTube. Uh, so I am very familiar with Jordan Peterson's teachings on this from what was on YouTube, from his lectures, as well as I listened to most of his uh, publicly available uh, for-profit lectures that were done uh, until he got sick. When he came back, I found that he was not as interesting nor as intense, uh, but I do still listen to his podcast. So let me give a short review of Beyond Order Force first. I really wish it was called Rules for Chaos, 12 Rules for Chaos, or even 12 Rules for Death, uh, instead of being called Beyond Order. I think the name is a, a bad choice, and I think it's indicative or indicative of some of the problems with this book. All three of the books, whether it's Maps of Meaning, Twelve Rules for Life, or Beyond Order, are kind of the same book. They're the same ideas, refreshed, recycled, and um, kind of honed down to a single message. When you read Maps of Meaning, a lot of these ideas are in there, but they're just, they're not well defined, and they're uh, kind of loosely connected. When you get the Twelve Rules of Life, uh, these are the best of everything that came out of uh, maps of meaning. When you get to be on order, it seems like it's kind of the leftovers of what was not used for maps of meaning in 12 Rules for Life. Beyond Order was powerful, uh, interesting, and good. But how 12 Rules for Life was an antidote to chaos. Um, Beyond order should have been an antidote to order, honestly, or uh, should have been a balance. And this book is not a balance. It, it doesn't encourage you to be more, more free, more libertarian, uh, to take more risks, to embrace the chaos more. Uh, instead, it's more structure, more order. And part of that is because he wrote this when he was sick and when he was in the hospital and he wrote this when he was recovering. And this reads like a book of recovery. So if you change your aim, if you change your goal from that which is set up in 12 Rules for Life, which is that the next book is going to show you how to be more free. If you take that goal away and instead look at it as a recovery book, as a book of someone trying to regain their sanity and their hold on reality, oh, the book becomes very powerful and much more relatable than 12 Rules for Life, and way more relatable than Maps of Meaning. But it doesn't have the impact of the power of the other two. So while it's more human, it's more alive than Jordan Peterson's other works, it's also less impactful and less life-changing. Um, I would get Beyond Order for anyone who's already read 12 Rules for Life or someone who's read 12 Rules for Life and Maps of Meaning. I would not get Beyond Order as the intro book to uh, someone who's trying to find themselves. 12 Rules for Life stands on its own. Beyond Order needs 12 Rules for Life. And if you've read 12 Rules for Life and Beyond Order, you don't need to read Maps of Meaning. Jordan Peterson helped me out his lectures and everything. So I had a 14 A1C. I had lost my job as a data entry clerk and a manager of an oil hauling company. I had moved back in with my father yet again. And uh, I had gotten fat. I had 
uh, ballooned up to 280 pounds on the 5.7. And um, my life had fallen apart. There was only one person who was interested in me, and that person's life was also pretty messed up. My dad's solution to my problems was to bring me donuts and pizza until I figured my stuff, my stuff out, which didn't help. He was enabling, basically. And uh, I was desperate for work. I was applying to everywhere, but nobody wanted an ex-writer, ex-personal trainer, um, ex-data entry clerk slash manager. That just People weren't looking for that, right? I'd been working for the company for, I think, five years. And I was on a board with my best friend. And my best friend, who was also diabetic, went through a bout of depression and he spent all of his money. He was mismanaging his money. We had several meetings on the board to try to reel him in. And he was buying more trucks than the company could afford. With his personal cut, he was buying, he was stockpiling weapons and um, not in a, he was going insane kind of way, just as in, he was looking for something to fill the void inside of himself and he couldn't find it. He chose to buy guns. I chose food and video games. Neither solution was a good solution. And in reading Jordan Peterson, um, after I had lost my ability to walk, uh, and refunding, uh, I'd already refound religion earlier, but maybe two years or two years or a year earlier than, than before I found Peterson. But once I started listening to Jordan Peterson, because I, I ignored him the, the first year or two that, that he popped up on my radar, I didn't want to listen to his stuff. I, I, I saw his lecture and I saw the interaction he had with the students. I was like, I don't care about this. And about six months down the line to a year down the line, after I had already started getting healthy, after I had already changed my diet and started losing weight and started the recovery process of learning how to walk again now from the diabetes. The diabetes had eaten up a lot of the muscle in the back of my leg. I'm never going to be as strong as I was back when I was a fighter. And that's something I've had to come to terms with in the last few years since being healthy again. But I became a personal trainer again. I started having clients again. I learned how to walk again. I, I, um, I went from only being able to walk to him for a minute to be able to, to run six miles a day, uh, which is the weight gain that I have now from my new job. That's part of the reason why it, it hurts me so much that I've gained this weight. I know it's only 50 pounds. I know I haven't ballooned up 120 pounds or 150 pounds, whatever I lost. I lost basically one whole person to lose my weight. Um, but even the 50 pound weight gain really disappoints me. And I feel like an addict who's uh, started eating food again. My addiction is food, you know? Uh, and uh, this book, Beyond Order, captures that feeling of what it's like to slip and fall after finding success. I got a good job that pays about four or five times what I made as a personal trainer or as a, a data entry clerk. I have a, a wife who's incredibly intelligent and beautiful and sweet, um, who's also very mean, <laughs> but that's a different story. Uh, but I have a good life and I now uh, take care of my father. My father got sick, um, had a cranial event, and uh, now I take care of him. And in this book, Beyond Order, captures that feeling, captures that feeling of remorse and loss and refinding yourself after finding success. What it's like to land and have to climb up that mountain one more time. And you're never, you're never done climbing up that mountain. You're gonna go up, you're gonna fall, you're gonna get back up again and again and again. In a way, this is a book of how to start. In a way, this is a book on how to recover after you've accomplished your goals and then things fall apart.
I don't think Beyond Order can be read on its own. I think you do need 12 rules for life. And I, I don't think that Beyond Order will work for everyone. Well, 12 rules for life will. But it's still a good book. If 12 rules for life is a 5 out of 5, Beyond Order is a 4 out of 5. And that's not bad. Okay, that was a lot of sharing. Uh, peace, like, and subscribe. I'll talk to you all later.